Hey everyone, I'm Christian Hartikainen and I'll be presenting our work on dynamical distance learning. This is joint work with my collaborators Jan Gang, Tuomas Harnoja and Sergei Levin. Reinforcement learning has recently shown great success in various domains ranging from gameplay to simulated robotics. One of the challenges though, especially when dealing with real-world environments, is that we need to have an access to a reward function. Imagine using reinforcement learning to train a policy for this maze navigation task. If you reward the agent only when it reaches the goal, this task might take a feasibly long time to learn. If on the other hand, we provide some reward shaping, an intermediate signal indicating proximity to the goal, learning could be much faster. But how do we measure proximity? If you use Euclidean distance, the shaping may be misleading. In this paper we ask, what is the ideal distance to use? We posit that the ideal distance would tell the agent how many time steps remain until the goal. Such a distance is aware of the environment dynamics, and we therefore call it the dynamical distance. We will go through the three main components of dynamical distance learning. First, we show how to learn a distance function for a given policy. Then, we will show how to improve the policy to reach goals using the learned distance function. And finally, we will propose a method for selecting the goals. Let's start by first defining the distance function and its learning objective. We define the distance as the expected cumulative cost between two states under our current policy pi. It's important to note that the distance function is conditioned on the policy. For example, if the policy is conditioned on a goal, this quantity describes how many time steps the specific goal conditioned policy needs to reach that goal. This allows us to use a simple supervised learning objective to regress the distance function to the samples gathered by the policy. Although in principle, one could use Q-learning style methods to learn value functions for shortest path policies directly, we will show in our experimental evaluation that our method, which alternates between fitting the distances to a given policy and then improving that policy, achieves substantially better results in a range of domains, including real-world image-based robotics tasks. Here's a concrete example of what the dynamical distances look like in a 2D maze environment. The red star in the middle presents a goal state, and the heat map denotes the estimated distance from each point to that goal. We can see that DDL learns to accurately estimate the shape of the ground through dynamical distances. Let's then discuss how we can use the learned distance to improve our policy. The objective we use is very similar to the standard reinforcement learning objective, the only difference being that we replace the reward function with the negative distance. This means that DDL can be applied to any standard reinforcement learning algorithm. The choice of using distance as a reward instead of directly optimizing for reaching the goal might seem a bit peculiar at first. But in the paper, we show that the distance to the goal under the improved policy actually decreases. And at convergence, the policy minimizes the number of time steps required to reach the goal, despite the fact that the reward is substantially better shaped than directly rewarding based on the number of time steps, which would simply correspond to a sparse reward of negative one until the goal is reached. And as we show in our experiments, in practice, this objective seems to work much better. Now that we know how to train policies with dynamical distances, let's discuss an application of this idea for learning from human preferences. In this setting, a human operator selects goals for our agent from a filtered set of previously explored states. Here's how it works. The agent is reset to the initial state, and it begins by exploring randomly. After a number of rollouts, the human operator chooses the next goal. The distance function is trained for the newly chosen goal, and the policy is then improved to reach that goal quickly. This way, on the next iteration, the agent can explore the states around it. Because the human guides the exploration, the agent always explores areas in the meaningful parts of the state space and makes progress towards the goal. Finally, let's look at some of the results. First, we apply DDL to a real-world manipulation task. The agent's task here is to rotate the valve to make the red arm point towards right. The four pictures at the bottom right corner illustrate the states that the human chose the goal from about an hour into the training. The human picked the third one because in it the red arm is closest to the desired orientation. Both the vision and state-based variants use only 10 human queries and take about 8 hours to converge. The learning curves show that DDL performs on par with both soft actor critic that has access to the oracle reward and vice which is a related method for training goal reaching policies. We repeated the previous experiment in a controlled simulation setting to highlight the components that make DDL successful. Most importantly, the supervised learning objective is crucial when we don't have access to the low-level state of the system. Also, minimizing the distance greedily fails in both cases, unlike using the distance as a reward function. The goal preferences are also efficient. DDL learns the standard gym locomotion tasks with less than 20% human queries compared to prior work. Simply picking goals to reach here and there requires much less supervision than what is needed to learn a full reward function for every state action pair. With DDL, the human specifies what the agent should reach, and the agent itself figures out the dynamics of how to reach there quickly. 
Thanks for listening.